My best guess is we solve it. I believe it. But solving it later is not acceptable. We need to solve it now. Well, howdy, y'all. Unky T here. Uh, this here particular video uh, was of a particularly heinous and evil crime that was committed down in Frostproof in, in the southern end of um, Polk County. Uh, pretty wilderness type area. And um, as always, Sheriff Grady Judd is out here trying to inform the public, um, you know, about the, the details best he can so that they can catch the murderers without giving it away. Um, you'll see that, I guess. But what the thing is, is this video was real long. Like, there's a lot of inane questions at the end from the reporters and all that stuff. So uh, I cut her down. I tried to cut out pieces best I could and not kind of lose the flow of the story. So, I don't know. I did what I could. I uh, hope you all uh, learned something from this, and, and uh, we'll carry on from there. Today, we're going to give you an update on the triple homicide that occurred on Friday night. Our detectives have literally been working 24-7 since the moment we received the first 911 call in order to solve this horrific case. This is a sad case. They're all sad, but this one's particularly sad. You've got three best friends. What is more wholesome than going fishing near Frostproof on a Friday night? It's orange groves and cow pastures and a beautiful lake. For those of you not, who are not from the area, Frostproof is a wonderful, very, very safe community. In fact, all of Polk County is very safe. Our crime rate's exceptionally low. We receive a frantic 911 call. When we respond, we ultimately talk to the dad. And dad's home in bed asleep. He knows that his son's going down there to fish with his buddies. He receives a an emergency call from his son, and all he can make out is help. Well, dad jumps out of bed, dresses, and runs to the area as quickly as he can, where he encounters his son's truck parked in the road, and, and they're all shot up. It's a massacre. He runs to his son's side, and he and his son are there in, in, in an intimate moment with his son actively dying, and his son is saying some things to him, which obviously we're not releasing to the public at this point in time. Then he realizes he doesn't have a cell phone. And he jumps in his car and he runs back to the community of Sunray, which is just about five or ten minutes away, to a convenience store that once again he knows the folks, they know him. 911 is called. There's been some question about, well, why didn't Dad use the son's, nine phone, uh, the son's phone from there? Well, I don't know whether or not he looked for it, but he probably wouldn't have found it. We had a difficult time finding it ourselves after the fact when we were doing our investigation. And Dad, in this hyper state of wanting to get help, wouldn't have been able to find the phone, I don't believe. Yeah. We've had well over 100 tips. Some of them look promising. Some of them are absolutely ridiculous, but hey, we'll take them all. We'll sort through them because we need the information. We still don't have a rest at this moment. We are following this case up. So I'm here today to tell you there's a reward of $30,000 dollars at this moment in time just for information that leads to the arrest of these horrific criminals and we believe there's more than one there may not be because we don't have them yet but when you look at the crime scene and you look at what we saw it gives us reason to believe at least at the early stages of the investigation that there was more than one suspect what's more wholesome than going fishing. Three buddies going fishing, we can all identify with that. And then being shot down in the middle of the road during the nighttime hours. 
we've got to bring these people to justice. It's important to understand that they've killed three people. They have nothing to lose at this point. We don't believe, have zero evidence to believe that they're out looking for people to kill. But we also know that for whatever reason that somebody else crosses their paths and makes them mad, they have nothing more to lose. Are there any questions? Sir, do you believe this was random or these guys were targeted? You know, when I stand behind this podium most of the time and talk about murders, I talk about either a domestic relationship gone bad or drugs, and that doesn't seem to be, at this point in the investigation, the event at all. This does not look like a drug deal gone bad. We have zero evidence of that. It does not appear to be a domestic event. We don't know the reason at this stage of the investigation. Was it something as simple as the two guys, or the three guys in the two vehicles, because Damien was in a red truck, and Brandon and Kevin were in a white truck, that they pulled up side by side and talked about their fishing strategy and blocked the road and made somebody mad? Or did somebody follow Damien down there and shoot him, which is one of our theories, and at that time Kevin and Brandon drive up, and it's my goodness, they've shot and killed one, so they shoot and kill the witnesses. We just don't know, it's speculation at this point. But three people died, three very close friends, doing what millions of people did across this country this weekend, and that's fishing with friends and enjoying their time away from work. That's why we need help. Frostproof is a safe community, and it has shaken Frostproof to its very core. Any other questions? Look, there are people out there that will give their brother up for $100. This is $30,000 cash, no taxes. We don't even have to know who you are. We just need information. Our analysts are putting together data that we're gathering. So we not only have detectives on the ground doing work, we have our analysts working with different pieces of what we believe is potential evidence. Our analysts are behind the scene working up information we've put together. We've also processed and are in this process, we have also processed and are currently processing items of evidence at different locations and obviously the vehicles that we took into custody over the weekend from the crime scene. So there literally are dozens and dozens of people working this investigation around the clock right now. If there was something we needed to share in order to generate more information, we would do that. As you know, according to Marcy's law, on Saturday morning, by law, we couldn't even release their names. And that's a weakness in that Marcy's law. So we went to the family of each of the men and we said, we think it's important that people know who these young men were. They're like 23, 27, 30 years old know who these young men are so that we can generate the interest in, oh my gosh, I'm from the Frostproof area, I know who that is, I'm from Avon Park. The families were totally cooperative, said yes, release their names, release the information you need to release so that we can get all of the information and solve this sooner rather than later. Sure, you alluded to it a little bit with the cell phone and well, first, you know, I've had editorial comment about social media in the past. Oh, most people are well-meaning and, and want to help, and for that we're grateful. There's a handful of nuts and you need to shut up and get off of Facebook and leave the families alone. 
for those that are well-meaning and trying to help, thank you from the bottom of my heart. There are evil, mean, sinister people out here that are in fact upsetting the family. And the families took that risk by identifying their children, but it's to them it was worth the risk so that we could get the information out so that potentially we can solve the crime sooner rather than later. And that's what we're after. We're going to work nonstop until there's absolutely nothing left to do. And my bet, because our homicide detectives are the, simply the very best, we've only had like two unsolved homicides in the last 11 years. My best guess is we solve it. I believe it. But solving it later is not acceptable. We need to solve it now. But to think these three young men were gunned down at night on the way to fish in a very quaint, quiet, safe, frostproof area shucks the conscience of not only the people in frostproof, but as I've learned throughout the United States based upon the media coverage this weekend. Well, there you go, my friends. Now, as I said earlier, it's a, it's a sad, a particularly sad and heinous crime. Uh, there seems to be no shortage of that anymore with the depravity of humanity and what the hell the world's come to. But we'll not dwell on the negatives. We'll go in the positives and say that uh, there's a lot of good people out there that are going to help them catch these people. Now, this happened about four months ago, give or take. Uh, it was in the, uh, you know, big time in the... Uh, through the United States and around the world, I think, even got some coverage. So uh, shortly to follow will be the actual criminals. That'll be the next video. They caught them. Spoiler. Anyways, please subscribe, like, and share. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to build this little channel into a little something that can inform people about what kind of place Florida is and, and what kind of great people we have down here. Uh, for the most part now, all you're seeing is these criminals and pieces of crap that walk around and they have to arrest them. But, uh, you know, for the most part, we're we're really, uh, really good and friendly people. So anyways, here's some videos for you to check out. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe and then check out these videos. And you all have a blessed day. You take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we'll see you real soon. Bye for now.